Oh, my VSWR, it's risen above 1.5 to 1. What am I going to do? How much power am I losing? Calm down. Let's take a look. Hello once again and thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. The last video I published was about the half square antenna and it's proved extremely popular. And in fact I've been operating CW for a few days now. Um, I seem to have sessions of operating CW and then SSB but I, I think on balance I tend to migrate back to CW there's some interesting stations you can wink, winkle out in the uh, in the noise there and it's been uh, very good but i must uh, tell you that um <laughs> even after all these years um you still make errors in the ham shack and i've been operating um probably for a couple of months now um without a vswr meter in in line which is goes against what i tell people to do actually and i put a vswr meter in a couple of days ago and i thought I don't, I'm not happy with this meter. It's, it does, it's not reading as high as it should be. And I checked the power, and I was running 100 watts on the IC7300. And so I thought, well, I'll, let me just turn the power down to 50 watts and uh, see what the meter reads then. And I turned it down to 50 watts, and it's still reading 50 watts. And then all of a sudden, I remembered that in messing about with the transceiver and in trying to get the ATU to uh, match into uh, a doublet. I'd switch the emergency mode on, which means to say it's only delivering 50 watts instead of 100 watts, so my signal's about 3 dB down. And I did notice the letter E in the top left-hand corner, but it just didn't register at all. So I went into the menu and I found that, yes, I was in the emergency mode, switched it off, uh, the transceiver rebooted, and now I've got 100 watts as confirmed by the birth through line. So we all we all make mistakes anyway this video is for the beginner um, it's all about VSWR really and I hope that I can uh, sort of straighten out a few points that are raised from time to time uh, particularly from beginners as to SWR you know um, what the effects are etc etc so um, what follows is really a, a basic guide to beginners so here goes VSWR stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. It's a rather technical term, but basically it's known as VSWR. And it's all about wasting power, which is not good news for ham radio operators. Let's have a look. I've got a bit of coax here. This coax is connected to your transmitter, and the RF energy comes out of your transmitter down the coax line, and it goes up to an antenna. Let's suppose in this particular case it's a dipole, a simple dipole. But even a simple dipole is not a perfect antenna. And it won't accept all the energy. A portion of that energy is reflected back. And we'll discuss in a minute how this happens or why it happens. This energy carries back down the coax line. It loses a bit of its impetus because of resistance in the coax line. And eventually it's energy that is lost. It's rather like having a busy factory production line. They're busy making the products. They shove them down to the packing department, but the packing department can't cope with everything, so they shove some of them back. Some of them get broke on the way back. And the packing department never do manage to pack all the products that the production line are making. Can you avoid VSWR? Well, not really. There's always going to be some VSWR. Take the humble dipole. Our radio is designed to operate into 50 ohms. And for the same reason, we use 50 ohm coax cable. But our little dipole is really a perfect 50 ohms. It's more likely to be around about 70 ohms, depending on height. And because you've got the mismatch, you've got a bit of VSWR. Now let's pick up on something I said uh, just now about coax loss. Clearly you can lose some signal or power in coax, it's inherent, coax will uh, absorb some power. But it's quite amazing how little power coax will actually absorb. Now let's take RG58, which is a very mundane common coax, and some people turn their nose up at RG58, but in actual fact it's not that bad. Uh, if you have 20 metres of RG58 and operate it at 40 megahertz, a 20 metre band, you'll lose less than 1 dB. So around about 0.8 dB, I think. 
So 20 meters of coax cable is probably a typical run for a small garden and it'll quite happily handle 100 watts and you'll lose less than 1 dB. Now, you can minimize that even more by buying more expensive cable. But unless you're running in high power where you need to run thicker cable, it's a bit of a pointless exercise. Because less than 1 dB, you really can't hear the difference. And even if you replace that coax with more expensive coax, you're still going to have a loss, maybe half a dB. So you've actually improved the signal or the, improved the loss by a fraction of a dB, which is neither here nor there. So unless you're going to run high power, at 20 meters, for example, RG58's a 20 meter run, no problem at all. So we can really ignore the coax loss. And in any case, we can't really do much about it. We can reduce it, but at this frequency, there's no point in reducing it. It's, it's, it's not a practical proposition. It's a fruitless task. Now, VSWR is very easy to measure. There's many VSWR meters about. They're not overly expensive and they're pretty accurate. VSWR is measured in ratios. A perfect match would be 1 to 1. But you can get 1.5 to 1, you can get 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. The higher the figure, the greater the loss. So let's take a look at what this actually means in practice. Looking at these figures, you may be surprised how little you actually lose. Even at 3 to 1, you're only losing just over 1 dB. And bear in mind that this loss includes the cable loss, which you can do nothing about. So even at 5 to 1, we've, we've reached a loss of 1.5 dB or thereabouts. The cable loss amounts to about 0.7 of that. So we've only introduced less than 1 dB as a result of the VSWR. So you see a modest VSWR of around about 2 to 1 or even 3 to 1 is acceptable. There are other reasons for wanting to get it down. One of the reasons, of course, for getting the VSWR down is that you want to move around the band. Now, the resonant point of an antenna normally is where the minimum VSWR is. As you move away from the resonant frequency, so the VSWR rises. So you may, for example, in the middle of the band, have a VSWR 1.5, which is as good as you're likely to get uh, for a lot of antennas. But then as you move to the band edges, the VSWR might rise to about two to one. Well, if you have a VSWR of 2 to 1 at the resonant frequency, then it's going to rise to about 3 to 1 at the band edges. So there is a reason for getting the VSWR down as low as possible. Now there's also another very good reason for getting the VSWR down as low as possible. If you have a transceiver that doesn't have an internal antenna tuner, then that transceiver, generally speaking, doesn't like VSWRs above around about 2 to 1. If the VSWR rises above 2 to 1, then there is a risk of damaging the transceiver. But you don't have to worry too much about that with a modern transceiver because they are protected. And what actually happens is as the VSWR rises above around about 2 to 1, so the power is reduced. So you see, if you have a highish VSWR, so you have a VSWR of around about 3 to 1, you may find that the transmitter output power is quite drastically reduced. So that's another reason for getting the VSWR down. VSWR can damage a transceiver. Most transceivers are protected, and they protect themselves by reducing the power. So as the VSWR rises, so the power of your transceiver goes down. Another good reason for trying to get your VSWR down to a minimum level. So you see, with a higher VSWR, the greater loss is not from the loss in the coax cable and the result of a mismatched antenna. The potential loss is much greater because the transmitter is protecting itself as the VSWR rises. Interesting, isn't it? So let's now take a look at how your modern transceiver is likely to protect itself. Here we have a transceiver, and rather a crude join, I'm afraid. And then inside your transceiver is an internal antenna tuning unit. It should be called a matching unit, really. But the purpose of this antenna tuner unit 
is to fool the transceiver into thinking it's got a perfect match and therefore the transceiver is quite happy to deliver full power and the full power goes down your coax line up to your antenna but and it's very important but even though the transceiver is delivering full power it hasn't removed the vsw on the coax line that still remains and there is still a bit of a loss because of that now here's something you need to understand let's uh, redraw the transceiver this is your transceiver sitting on your desk now inside your transceiver is a vswr meter draw it here on the left that's your vswr meter and that is connected to your antenna tuner or a matching unit now that vswr meter sees a perfect match provided your antenna tuner is switched in that vswr sees a perfect match and you think great i've got a perfect match but you've still got the vswr on that coax line going back up to the antenna because we've still got the vswr on the coax line despite the internal atu it makes sense to use an external meter to monitor the true VSWR. So we take a short length of coax cable from a transceiver, we insert the VSWR meter, and then we connect the coax line that goes up to the aerial. That means to say that although the internal um, VSWR meter is reading a good match, we want to see what the actual VSWR is on the line at all times, just in case you have a problem. Now we haven't quite finished yet. SWR meters have a habit of reading the incorrect values because of common mode currents flowing down the outer of the coax. In order to avoid this problem, you need to insert a line isolator, and this is no more than just a ferrite core. I've used 230-43 material. Um, just wind a few turns of the coax cable around that core and then take the cable on up to the antenna. That make sure that the VSWR meter won't be affected by common mode currents. There is an excellent calculator for calculating coax losses and uh, looking at how VSWR and the types of cable are affected, affect the losses and so forth. And I'll put a link to it under this video. It's the best calculator I've come across. It's really excellent and very educational. So I, I recommend you click on it and take a look and you can work out the, your own potential losses. So let's summarize. First of all, the only way to improve your VSWR is to adjust your antenna. An antenna tuning unit or an antenna matcher won't change the actual VSWR on your coax line. The loss on coax is not probably as great as you might imagine. And if you use that calculator table that I mentioned just now, you can calculate your own loss. Certainly, it, uh, it's a bit of a myth that uh, you need to spend a lot of money on coax cable on the HF bands unless of course you're running high power but you can calculate that for yourself. It makes sense to have an external VSWR meter because the external VSWR meter will tell you the truth provided you have the line iso isolator in place. So don't be fooled by the internal VSWR meter on your transceiver when you've got the ATU uh, tuner switched in. That will read an excellent match, will read one to one or whatever, um, but that is not the true VSWR on the coax cable. VSWR is not as much of a problem as you might imagine. Two to one, two, two and a half to one, even three to one. It's not as bad as you might think. Again, look at that calculator that I mentioned. So I hope it's clarified this for you, particularly if you're a newcomer. I know it can be a bit confusing, but I hope it's helped you anyway. And uh, it's, uh, it's also always comforting to actually sort of understand things rather than sort of you know, believe what you're told or what you read and or just think, oh gosh, SWR, I've got, it's, it's 1.75 to 1. How much power am I losing? The answer is not much at all. Anyway, thank you for your support on this channel. Thank you for watching this video. It's been great to have your company on this video and I look forward to meeting you in the next video. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Don't forget down at Portsmouth, we've got some excellent uh, uh, bargains down there. We, we stock almost all the uh, ham radio equipment. So either look on our website or pick up the phone 
and I'm sure they'll do something for you. Enjoy ham radio. See you in the next video. Bye.